All right, let's talk Daniel Jones. That's going to be our second. I love the headline options we've got below Daniel Jones. Uh, <laughs> this quarterback going after round 10 has top five upside. That's in capital letters. Also, could Daniel Jones be the next Josh Allen? Why Daniel Jones is the quarterback steal of 2023. All respectable headlines. Uh, obviously, we're talking about Daniel Jones here. We've talked about Daniel Jones together on multiple podcasts in the past. But sell me on this. These are these are some very, very snazzy headlines. These are attention getters. Sell me on Daniel Jones again. Let's do it. Despite <laughs> being outside the top 10 rounds, I really do think he could be top five this year. And that's what we saw with Josh Allen's breakout. And why am I comparing these two? We're going to dive into that now. So last year, quarterback 10 for Daniel Jones on the season. And he was thrown to absolutely nobody. He only had... 15 passing touchdowns last year and yet still was in the top 10. Why? A lot of that was the rushing upside over 700 yards, seven touchdowns on the ground was Konami upside. But now can that passing game then take it to the next level and have him just like we saw with Josh Allen, always getting it done with the legs. And then we saw a huge boom. Daniel Jones, even last year, we started to see the passing game click a bit more. After week seven on, when they finally seemed, let's have this be our guy, let's commit to him. He's the quarterback six, only Hurts, Mahomes, Fields, and Josh Allens were ahead of him as well as Burrow. So great names to be included in. 60% of those games were top 12. Seven of them were above 20. Three were above 30. So we've already starting to see that boom can win you a week type of ceiling with Daniel Jones last year, again, throwing to nobody. Now, with only 15 touchdowns, I actually project those to nearly double next year. That may seem egregious, but you look at one. They add Darren Waller. Now, that's not Stephon Diggs. I know the Josh Allen comparison, but this is a legitimate, bona fide number one receiving presence if he is fully healthy. Big if, I get that. But we also now have a full season of Isaiah Hodgins. Why is that a big deal? His name's Isaiah Hodgins. Who the hell is that wolf? Well, he actually led the Giants in receiving touchdowns last year, despite not joining the team until week 10. They had an incredible rapport in the red zone and a full season of those two working together, a big body for Isaiah Hodgins. That could be big for Daniel Jones. Darren Waller, Hodgins for a full season, already, I think, nearly add eight to 10 touchdowns to that total. And again, Daniel Jones had nine of his 15 touchdowns after week 10, after the bye week. So halfway there, you have about 22 touchdown pace right there. You add in Paris Campbell, Wandale Robinson's now in year two, Jalen Hyatt. I don't know which one of those guys wins the slot role, but either of them will be a souped up kind of Richie James who really was thriving down the stretch of the season. And Daniel Jones himself had 24 touchdowns in his rookie year. The only other season he had a semi-competent play caller uh, other than, of course, Brian Dayball this last year. And then you look at the Josh Allen comparison to bring it back to full circle here. In his first full year as a starter under Brian Dayball was the quarterback 14 in points per game. We had, again, Daniel Jones was quarterback 10. And Josh Allen had 460 attempts, 3,089 yards, 20 passing touchdowns. The next season as a starter under Brian Dable, quarterback three, goes from 461 attempts to 572, 3,000 yards to 4,546, and then 37 touchdowns, adding 17 to his total. So, yes, a historic, ridiculous leap there. I'm not projecting Daniel Jones to go quite so nuclear in such a drastic comparison between the two years. In fact, I have Daniel Jones going for – 560 attempts, 380 completions, 4,222 yards, 27 passing touchdowns in addition to 660 on the ground, six touchdowns there, and seven interceptions. So about 75% of the jump that Josh Allen took to break out. And I think that seems pretty similar because a lot of the same recipe, including, again, Brian Dable, the key here, is still in place. I think Daniel Jones is about 70% of the player when he's at his best as Josh Allen, and I think Darren Waller is about a 60% of an upgrade to Stefan Diggs. So all of those things seem to align to me. And, and yes, Saquon would be nice to have as a weapon, but honestly, if he holds out, I think that just means more work is going to be tossed onto Daniel Jones's plate. So I think all of these things align to a huge breakout season. He ends up landing as my quarterback eight based on those projections and just a couple points or so behind Justin Fields, Joe Burrow, but going five, six rounds after them. I love the price tag on Daniel Jones. Well, and, and the quite outlandish predictions that you have for him, the final projection stat line you've got, I want to remind you and everybody else that it, it's actually less than it was. I had to get you to calm down a little bit when we talked about uh, the, yeah. the Lions projections for the NFC East. I actually, these are the reeled in stats. 
these are the stats where I, I splashed cold water in his face and was like, okay, let's let's settle down here. Maybe <laughs> says as a Giants fan, I'm not as high on Danny Dimes as the Wolf. Maybe 20 touchdowns max or 22 touchdowns max. We'll see. And it was more the yardage that was that was a little shocking to me. The touchdowns as well, but that was a lot. Also, before we go into the next one, the, the Wolf messaged me. He's like, he's like, those headline options you're reading are YouTube clips. I was aware of that, but I was enjoying reading them. You're welcome to still toss about it. Was it was me me I was like, you know, ch- trying to like, I was picturing like uh, a, the newspapers and movies that spin into the screen with like the crazy headlines. And I was just like, <laughs> I was like man, I would read that article. Um, what is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest wolf pack by subscribing below.